Today we're reading through why Linus Torvalds has rejected the idea of upstreaming LTTNG, the Linux Trace Toolkit Next Generation, into the Linux kernel, as he instead proposed adding a parallel standalone tracing system rather than trying to integrate with the existing kernel tracing infrastructure. This is a big no against LTTNG. So let's get into why this happened and Linus's reasoning. But before we do, we need to understand what LTTNG is. LTTNG is an open source tracing framework for Linux and described on their website, what is LTTNG? As the name suggests, the Linux Trace Toolkit Next Generation is a modern toolkit for tracing Linux systems and applications. So your first question might be, what is tracing? And they explain that below. Well, this is starting to become a long winded way of saying tracing and the tracing toolkit is just another toolkit for things like debugging software and doing performance analysis of Linux systems. And this helps you profile and identify performance bottlenecks. Anywhere where you see performance losses, you can use the powerful tracing tool to analyze what's happening inside of a Linux system. Things like performance issues, crashes, and strange behavior, it allows developers to record and inspect detailed low-level events from the kernel and user space. And you can imagine why software developers use this, especially big names like IBM, Sony, Siemens. They all use tracing kits for debugging complex problems that are hard to reproduce, understanding system performance in real time, and optimizing applications. So there are massive benefits to having LTTNG as part of the Linux kernel, but not in Linus's eyes. And now let's spend some time understanding why. Here's where the proposal started out before Linus gets involved. Hi. It was suggested that the LTTNG kernel tracer be upstreamed and become its own kernel subsystem in a recent LKML discussion. This is Linux kernel mailing list. This would allow this 20 year old project to move to its development from kernel modules with an out of tree Git repository into the Linux kernel tree. The LTTNG kernel tracer repository can be found here. And considering that most recent attempts to upstream it were not successful due to the size of the project, which says 75,000 lock or lines of code and lack of time from tracing maintainers to review it. I'm sending this RFC or request for comment and Linus did comment to ask what is the best way forward. And I don't think the suggestion from Linus is going to make this particular person too happy. But anyways, continuing on to talking about how LTTNG has developed over the last 20 years. Over those 20 years, we've tried to be good citizens by actively contributing to the Linux kernel within the following area, trace points, restartable sequences, mem barrier system call, RCU review, and tracing review. Now you can also be good citizens if you subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux videos like this. You wouldn't want to miss another video. Make sure to smash that like button on the way back up. And the rest of this, I'm going to summarize a little bit because it goes into a lot of history as well as goals of upstreaming and proceeding to upstream. So mainly here, Matthew is proposing finally upstreaming LTTNG, this powerful tracing tool for Linux after being nearly developed for two decades. It's still living outside the mainline kernel and describes how previous versions tried to get into the kernel, but other tools were chosen over it like Ftrace and Performance or Perf. And in 2012, they even tried merging it into the kernel staging tree, but maintainers wanted LTTNG to be merged into Perf, which wasn't feasible. And finally, in 2020, there was a failure to, again, upstream it into the kernel because the code base was just too large and daunting to go through. Regardless of all this, let's see what Linus has to say about this. In response to the, the upstreaming conversation, Linus replies, Honestly, I don't see the point. That's one way to start things out. The reason the current tracing infrastructure got merged was that people were willing to do it incrementally. I was hoping that there would be some kind of eventual merging of the different ring buffers, etc. That was discussed as a hopeful end goal originally, but here we are decades later and it never happened. And honestly, I'm not interested in just having two different tracing models. If people need two tracing models, then the other one will be out of the tree. It's that simple, which I believe Linus just doesn't want duplication which causes fragmentation when it comes to tracing models. Basically having parallel tracing systems like LTTNG and Ftrace or performance increases maintenance complexity and can introduce extra potential bugs, wasting developer effort. Moving on because if people haven't been able to agree upon common models in the past decades, I really don't see the point of maintaining two models indefinitely side by side in the upstream kernel. 
So as far as I'm concerned, this discussion is not a discussion. Pretty much ends it up front. Either there's a way to merge things incrementally with shared infrastructure or there isn't. And then he puts his foot down, no two different and disjoint trace buffers, no two different and disjoint trace interfaces. And very clearly, based on history, the unification will never happen. Signed off Linus. And Linus's message sounds very blunt here. It's firm as he's closing the discussion right away in a very direct tone. As Linus says no due to too much parallel infrastructure, which he's not interested in, he has no faith in a unification of tracing software as it hasn't happened over the last two decades. So it sounds like a total fairy tale here. Also, it's just too big. It's a daunting task. In 2020, a similar discussion took place and people began going through the code to try and unify it. And it just fell through. Basically, people just stopped working on it. It's too big. It can't be incremental and argues that we already have tracing tools. And unless we want to merge them, we're not adding more to the upstream. Now, it's important to understand Linus is not saying this is bad technology. This tracing tool is used by many, many big companies. Again, I mentioned a few of them, including Sony, IBM, and Siemens, but that doesn't mean we should just roll over and start adding things into the kernel. Anyways, let's continue on as there is another reply from Linus, maybe clearing things up a little bit. But before we get to that, if you want to level up your Linux experience today, make sure to go to SavvyNick.com where you can download my Linux cheat sheet, mind map, checklist, and new flashcards. Today, let's continue on to Steven's response. To Lena saying, honestly, I don't see the point. I'll note that one of the reasons that we couldn't use LTTNG ring buffer is because the format, the tracing ring buffer, and the performance ring buffer were already exposed to user space and would break tooling if they were changed. LTTNG actually has more features than either of the existing in kernel buffers, so it couldn't use the existing buffers without breaking its own tooling. Basically what's being said here is the LTTNG's ring buffer was incompatible with existing kernel buffers because changing it would break existing tools. And replying to, and honestly, I'm not interested in just having two different tracing models. It's not that anyone needs two models. It's that there's one model that one set of people use and that there's another model that another set of people use. The entry tracing, AKF trace, is designed to be used for kernel developers. It's quick and easy to use and find issues and is mostly focused around kernel development. The TraceFS directory interface has been a godsend for embedded developers since it only needs BusyBox to be useful. LTTNG is more focused towards admins and is around monitoring how the system is, is behaving. It has a different set of tooling and interfaces. And even though LTTNG serves different audiences compared to Ftrace, clearly Linus doesn't want it unless it reuses existing infrastructure or cleanly integrates into one of the other tools. Moving on, a reply to because if people haven't been able to agree on common models in the decades past, I really don't see the point of maintaining two models and definitely side by side in the upstream kernel. And the answer to that from Steven is although they do have separate set of buffers and interfaces, the actual infrastructure trace points, functions, hooks, etc., is shared. And the last reply here is to, and very clearly based on history, that unification will never happen. Steven says, unfortunately, I think you're right. Seemingly feeling defeated here as it was a quick no by Linus. Now we finally get the last reply from Linus. Let's check that out in even further why this is a no. And Steven does clarify a little bit. Unfortunately, I think you're right. He says, actually, let me take that back. I think you're right as long as one is out of tree because there's no incentive to merge them. If LTTNG were to be in tree, it would be much easier to work on a strategy to merge the infrastructure as the maintainers of both would have better access to each other's code. The Linux kernel has a long history of two or more ways of doing something that eventually was merged into a single shared infrastructure. But as long as one is out of the tree, it will never happen. That's because it is much harder to merge infrastructure together when they are separated like that. Signed off Steven. So Steven or Steve here is saying, as long as LTT NG is not part of the official Linux kernel or the upstream, it's very hard to combine it with the existing tools. So what does in tree versus out of tree mean? Well, in tree code that is officially part of the Linux kernel source code, AKA like performance or F trace and out of tree just means code that's outside the kernel. For those of you unaware, it's maintained separately from the kernel. So the argument here is that being in tree helps, aka developers of the kernel can now see and understand each other's code more easily. 
they can collaborate and refractor things and are more likely to do this because it exists in the kernel and it can be reviewed by the same maintainers and encourage integration with another tool. When they're separated, they're, the argument here is that there's less visibility, higher friction to collaborate, and there are real examples of this, basically two ways becoming one way. We can think of file systems, for example, shared file system infrastructure. At first, there was the ext2, 3, and 4, which were all separated. And over time, they are now sharing common code like journaling and block management. And they are actually part of a shared code base now. Same things with kprobes and ftrace. If we want to talk about tracing tools, kprobes and ftrace were independent tooling for tracing. Kernel devs created a unified trace events interface so tools can reuse infrastructure today performance or perf ftrace and even bpf use shared tracing backends the strategy does make sense but it doesn't make sense when you have an absolutely massive code base that we haven't been able to merge in 20 years anyways let's continue on to see what linus finally says in replying to this that's not a bet i'd take if people haven't unified this in the last two decades just like i mentioned before i'm not going to take the argument of hey Merge it because then it will be unified. Because honestly, that sounds like a total fairy tale to me. The princess came along and kissed the toad and it turned into a beautiful prince or price. <laughs> and they lived happily ever after. So no, I don't believe in fairy tales. Not when we have two decades of that didn't happen. If people can unify this and merge it incrementally, that's one thing. Until then, you're just making stuff up. In true Linus fashion, show me the code, signed off Linus. Again, blunt but clear here. Basically, talk is cheap, the past does matter, and he doesn't see anything good about merging first and fixing later. As Linus really cares about the history here, 20 years of separation is a pattern, not a fluke, and that there should not be a claim that unification will happen later with the code bases. It has to start happening now. He is very adamant about kernel tracing should be a unified tool, not split up, there's no nonsense here, and no tolerance to maybe someday things will work out, in, especially in the critical Linux kernel infrastructure. So for now, LTTNG is staying out of the tree. After 20 plus years of multiple failed attempts to unify tracing approaches, clearly Linus sees no value in maintaining two disjoint tracing systems. He wants incremental integration with the shared infrastructure and not a massive code dump of 70,000 lines with trust us we'll get it done later it all makes sense to me but i do want to hear from the community what do you think about this and linus's response to steven does this make sense should we start adding more tracing tools to the linux kernel how does this affect other projects being upstreamed let's start talking about it in the comments section and if you enjoy following lore like this around don't forget to subscribe below and smash that like button so other people get this information as well. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.